Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Coming up on College Football Replay, the 120th edition of the classic rivalry of Army and Navy. Navy comes in ranked number 23 in the country with nine wins. Army trying to make their season if they can make it four straight over the midshipmen. It's all coming up on the CBS Sports Network. Last year, Army came in with a nine-game uh, win season with a chance for 11, which they did. And now it's Navy flipped around, and they've got the 9-2 and two campaign. Brad, we all know this. In football, they say the quarterback gets too much credit in a win and too much blame in a loss. But there's also another saying. When you get too far down that depth chart at quarterback, a lot of bad things happen. Last year, it was Navy mm -hmm. that played three quarterbacks. This year, it's been Army that's had the problem at quarterback, and it shows. And it's a flux situation for them, and it's not going to help them too much. It is. Uh, we don't exactly know who will we see in this game. Calvin Hopkins, their starter, warmed up. Jabari Lulls will not play. Christian Anderson could be the starter. We might see a fourth quarterback in this game. You can see Calvin Hopkins, number eight. There's the backup quarterback on crutches, and there's Christian Anderson, the number three quarterback. So that, again, you come into this game, the quarterback has been the story in this game in this past three-game winning streak. As you said, last year it was Navy that had a problem. They certainly don't have a problem at that position this year. No, Malcolm Perry has been given the wheels of the stern of the ship, and that ship has been full speed ahead for this Navy offense. 250 yards rushing when he played quarterback two years ago, but now he's brought the passing game to it. Malcolm Perry has been the difference at this position and why Navy is so highly ranked. And he is the player of the year in the AAC coming in. So a dynamic player at that spot. Jeff Munkin, the head coach at Army, a disappointing season, he said, but that taste can go out of their mouth if they can pull off the win today. Let's head down to find out who's going to get the football first to our referee in the coin toss, Mike Roach. Good afternoon and welcome, special guests, dignitaries, General Michael Roach, this is Hilbert Byers. Captains, would you please introduce yourselves? Gentlemen, we're gathered here for the coin toss. It's obviously with great pride and great honor to welcome our Commander-in-Chief, our President of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you for all that you do, all the good you do for our country. We thank you for joining us today to make this a special moment. This is a commemorative coin that we'll be using. The 120 logo will be the heads. The other side will be the tails. Army, since you are the visitor, it is your toss to call, heads or tails. Heads is the call by Army. Again, Mr. President, thank you for joining us. We do us the honor. It is a tails. Navy's won the toss and elected to defer that option to the second half. Army will begin the game by receiving in the southernmost end zone. Gentlemen, an honor of all the armed service men and women across the globe, and in honor of our veterans, let's shake hands and let's have a great day for football. So Navy won the toss and deferred, and that means the Black Knights of Army will have the football first. Playing for the Commander-in-Chief trophy. If Army wins it, they retain. If Navy wins it, they'll take it back to Annapolis. And as our Commander-in-Chief makes his way to the sideline, we're just about set for the 120th Army-Navy game. Sellout crowd still making its way in because of the high security around Lincoln Financial Field. <laughs> you know what strikes me about this all the time? This buildup for this game never disappoints. No, it doesn't. And we can't wait for the first snap and the opening kick.
But before we do kick it off, we go to the third member of our team, Jamie Erdahl. For the third time in his presidency, Donald Trump is at this game. The first when he was president-elect, and now this is second time as president. He visited both locker rooms when he arrived to the stadium, first with Army and then with the Naval Academy. The players were fired up. I spoke with both sets of teams. And when he was in the Naval Academy locker room, he signed an executive order stating that players who play at the military academies are able to go on and fulfill a professional football career after they play for these schools. Tremendous athletes end their careers often at this game at Army Navy, Brad. So it is an exciting prospect for these players to complete this game and have a future in the NFL. And for so many years, of course, you had to wait until your service commitment was over to have that opportunity. And there are several guys on both these teams that may get that chance to play professional football. Army gets the ball first. They have a three-game winning streak. Remember this. They have scored on their opening drive three years in a row to take the lead. Remember, Navy had that 14-game streak. Then Army ended it. They've got a three-game streak of their own, and that's why it's so important to the Navy midshipmen to go out with a win because they don't want to be a class that never had the opportunity to beat Army. 70,000 on hand. Bijan Nichols getting it teed up. Brandon Walters and Artis Hobbs are back deep for Army. Kicking into the wind. The wind is right to left on your screen. And it's really picked up in about yes. the last hour. So they're going to hold it. Naroa Obano will hold for Nichols to keep the ball on the tee. It all started in 1890 between these two military academies. And for the 120th time, here we go. High short kick. Running up on it at the 17 is Walters. But he only got to about the 19 before he got leveled. And Walter Little lit him up. Uh, festivities are over. <laughs> it's enough for the the niceties. Yes, are gone. with all the shaking of the hands, that is done. Play football. So the Chick Fil A starting lineups as Army comes out, and it's going to start with Christian Anderson. First Army quarterback to make his first start in the Army Navy game since T. Day Decker, T. D. Decker in 1979. And immediately a big hit on Sandon McCoy again. Yeah. And if you want to watch some good football, watch Jackson Pittman, number 99, the middle of that Navy defense. Second down and 10. Trying to get an option pitch and he can't. And he's dropped for a loss again and it's Pittman who Gary just talked about. So we take a look at the rest of the Army lineup for you. Sandon McCoy so far has been met at the line of scrimmage. And the Army's going to throw. No, they're not. Sack. Jackson Perkins and Jacob Springer are there. The disappointment in the Navy defense a year ago forced Ken Niamatololo to make changes. More attacks, and this time Springer from his Raider position, I think that's what it is, or yep. the outside position, kind of blitzes. No one to throw that football, and negative play, negative play, negative play. And Army is number one in the country in the least amount of negative plays. They're three for three. So Zach Harding's got a punt inside his own 10, and he just got it away. They'll clear out of the way. It's going to take a nice bounce for Army, and it'll roll out at about the 32-yard line. So the last three years in a row, Army has scored touchdowns on their opening offensive drive, three and out. So let's check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups going the other way for the midshipmen of Navy. And we've talked about him. Player of the year in the AAC and why not with unbelievable numbers. Third straight year over a thousand rushing. Fifteen hundred yards on the ground this year and over a thousand in the air and has accounted for twenty five touchdowns and that's the group that joins him 
led by his center, the captain of captains. Ford Higgins. Perry rolling to throw on the first snap, but he'll run instead. And look at that move. Only got about two out of it, though. Nice job by Cole Christensen to stay home, the middle linebacker, yeah. to make the stop. And I think that's a win. 400 yards of Malcolm Perry's rushing yards this year have been on scrambles on called pass plays. That's when he's most dangerous. Defensively for Army. You'll see the lineup on the bottom of your screen. Cole Christensen, who just made that tackle, their leading tackler. And on the back end, Elijah Riley, one of the great defensive backs in all of college football. Second down and eight. And straight up the left side is Carruthers. And a swarming defense keeps him shy of the first down. It's going to bring up third down and about three. Pulling inside, Nestorowitz number 73 comes around the corner, but this Army defense, they move all the time up front. They don't have a lot of experience coming back, but they're constantly moving and very difficult to block. So here's third down for Navy, a 45% team in third down conversions on the year. Army kind of showing blitz, they'll back out of it, and it's the fullback, and he's not going to get there. Carruthers hammered by Eric Smith. Holy mackerel, there's some hitting going on. I, I'm, I'm not hyping this at all. There is beauty in watching these defensive players play like this. You know, I mean, two just hungry defensive teams that find the ball carrier on these types of offenses. They're familiar with each other. They face it every day in practice and spring practice. They almost know what's coming. That's our referee cam. You hey, saw that last cool. replay from. Yeah. And it's not three and out, it's three and knockout. So exactly. Far. So another putting situation this time for Navy and Owen White to kick. Miranda back deep, high, lazy kick. And everybody get out of the way, just like the previous punt from the other direction. And this one rolls dead around the 22-yard line. The new defensive coordinator, Brian Newberry, has got something to do with that, huh? He does. He's right here in this situation. His new defensive coordinator at the end of last year, Kenny Niamatololo, who has not made a lot of changes to his staff, decided that the Navy defense had to be upgraded, so he went to Kennesaw State yep. to find his defensive coordinator. And they like to get six. That's a com combination of three and yes. outs, four and down stops, one. or turnovers. And they got one already on the first one, and if they don't figure out a way to block number 99 in the middle of that defense, it's not <laughs> going to matter what strategy Army has. Connor Slomka in at the fullback spot now for Army behind Christian Anderson. And he'll get the call and got two tough yards against the Navy defense that we didn't have a chance to set for you in that first series because of three quick plays. But here it is defensively. Pittman's already made a couple of plays. Carruthers, one of their captains. And on the back end, you see the defensive secondary pick up a two. That's a plus for Army. So yeah. it's second down and eight. So the get six measurement brought in by Brian is that if they figures if they can get a combination of six of those, their chances of winning goes way up. Studying all the tapes from Navy games in the past. That's, get six. That's the analytics of it all. Second and eight. No pitch for Anderson, but a wide open field. Great run out to the 45 for Christian Anderson. So you figure you can't go inside, you can't block him. So what do you do? You just go back to your option game. Slavka gets a great block, number 25, and then you got two on one. You get Springer covering the pitch man, and Anderson said, oh, no, I can do this. We talked to Christian yesterday and said, do you think your game against Hawaii was your best game so far? It certainly was as far as a career high, 114 yards on 12 carries. He got 21. On that one, and a first down for the Black Knights didn't at even, the 45. Didn't even play in the first four games of the season. And he'll keep it here after the... He fumbled it, I think. Yeah, he got it. Did he get right. it back? He got drilled by Kevin Brennan from the secondary. Got it out to around the he 49. He had it all the way, yep. He was fake to the fullback, follow the lead back, and yes, he did have it all the way. He held it out with both hands, Yes, though. he did. So second and six at the 49. 
A lot of pressure. We saw it before these first year starting quarterbacks. Remember Zach A.B. came in. His first start was in this game a few years ago. A lot of pressure. Everybody's feeling it. But to be the quarterback and direct this offense, whole different level of pressure. Teal Klein, the wide receiver to the top of the screen should they decide to throw. Second down and six. They will not. Anderson somehow slipped <laughs> under the would be tackle. Yes, he did. Of Cromarty. Well, there you look at at the end of spring practice, all the guys kind of throwing their hat in the ring to be the quarterback, and uh, they went down the depth chart. Yeah, they did. You don't like to get that far down, as you said in the open. Third down is short three. And not going to get it, I don't think. Well, now the analytics will come in. Nobody runs more fourth down plays than Army and Jeff Munkin. They are 24 out of 36 on the year on fourth down. This is fourth and uh, about two feet. There's the last two seasons, most in the nation. Now you, you wonder if you're going to get the push in this, the quarterback sneak push from the fullback. Slumka got a little bit closer to his quarterback, and he'll be the shove man. Did he get it? I think he did. Well, Navy says no. The official coming in, the linesman from the far side's foot, tells me yes. Well, Navy was ready for the quarterback sneak. There is no doubt. First down. They were, they knew it was coming, but the push. Slomka gets half a carry on that one. <laughs> Carrying his quarterback's yeah. rear end. Yes, he never touched the ball, but he, in all essence, he does. So an all-important fourth down pickup and, and that, first down. You're going to tell by the third down call they were playing the game that on fourth down they were going for. Oh, is there going to be a review on this? Ruling on the field is that the runner made the line to gain. That plays under further review. So it'll go to replay. Buddy Ward is our replay official. Had a couple good looks at it. Had to touch the line with the football. His helmet was there, and then at the last second, here was the call from the replay. There was stands. They had no clear-cut look at it. They had to go with the call on the field. Gene Steratore, our rules officials with us. Gene, welcome to Army-Navy. Thanks, Brad. I think stands is a good call, too, and really the only angle was the sky cam, so maybe next year we can uh, tie an official to that cam so we can get a <laughs> shot at it from the officials on the field, guys. That's beautiful. <laughs> we'll try to work on that. <laughs> yeah. So both first downs have come from Christian Anderson runs the last one on the quarterback sneak here. He's got the pitch to Kel Walker and he is dropped for a loss. Well Gene we know that your dad was part of this back in 74 with President Ford. There you see Gene Steratore senior with the coin toss. And Gene, he I know sure was Brad you know. You, you just lost your dad not too to long ago. Five of these. Yeah, we lost my father four months ago, and and he had the honor of working five Army Navy games. And of all the games he worked, this was the most cherished game of all, for sure. It is for a lot of people and a lot of us in this business as well. First down, pass, or not a first down, but a pass and a completion. Yes, and that puts Army back on track. You get a quarterback that throws, a young quarterback completes a pass, confidence for the play caller, and back in phase for third and fourth down calls. Cam Harrison, their leading receiver, that's his 24th catch of the year, and that's a lot for Army. Yeah, that's like five years worth prior to this year. <laughs> so third down and two. Still those tight for Army likes to do the toss in this, but in this four down territory, I wonder if they'll dare toss it. Sandy McCoy, the fullback. They will not toss it, and Anderson's got another first down run, his third of this drive. Have to give Christian Anderson a lot of credit here. He hasn't played a lot of quarterback when you're number three early in the year. The first eight games barely got on the field, only against Morgan State, but he looks very comfortable running the offense. That was his first career action against Morgan State, and I mentioned he had a good game against Hawaii in their 52 to 31 loss in their most recent game, but he's off to a Heck of a start here. Tenth play of the Army drive. They'll keep it straight ahead to Kel Walker. Walker was a huge part of this game back in 2016. He almost had a hundred yard game. 
Last year he had 109 total yards yeah, between he had that, kickoffs and uh, runs. He had that big run on that opening drive that set up the Army's first touchdown that Calvin Hopkins scored on the next play. Yeah, he had a 51 yarder, a career long. Again, in phase, three or four yards, hold the ball, 10 play drive, Move keep it chains. away from Malcolm Perry. Everything's working yep. for Army right now. On ref cam, the umpire, as you take a look across to Anderson and Slumka. And Anderson kept it again. Man, man, Boy, he man. paid the price yes, that time. You, do. you play quarterback in this option offense, you have to be ready to take those hits. That time from the secondary, Kevin Brennan, number 10, is going to fill. And he fills <laughs> it up. Yep, that's a fill. Brennan, the bandit back there, the sophomore out of Westfield, New Jersey, with a big hit. And it brings up third down and four. Well, they go option again. They've been successful on the option play against Navy twice in the game. Quarterback kept it both times. They've been great on third down conversions the past couple of years. Not as high this year, but on this drive they have been. Is Anderson going to pitch? Nope. Nice he's going to keep and nice he's close. Take. Yes, beautiful. I think play. he's got it. But that, you know that that just reminds me of old time players right there at quarterback. You just string it out, string it out, and the last thing you do is give that little fake. Just ran through the tip of a tackle and lunges forward, keeps the clock moving, gets three more plays if they don't turn it over. Everything that Army would hope for, they're getting in this drive. Anderson has four first down rushes on this drive. <laughs> Again, the strategy for Army would they'd love to go three and a half, three and a half, three, and then you know take the first down and third down or fourth down. McCoy back behind Anderson just inside the 23 of maybe. He'll come left. He will not pitch here either, and he got close to the 20. Jacob Springer makes the tackle. Well, Noah Knapp, number 65, up against Jackson Pittman, 99, is a battle. You're going to see it all day. Let's see who's in there this time. I think it's Reeder, number 76, is at center this time. They rotate 10 different starters, and that Army offensive line will play in this football game. Well, that thing looked like a crossword puzzle in the middle of the season well, when they were in a five-game losing streak. Exactly. But now they're kind of solidified. Even though they do move them around, everybody's a little bit healthier. And short of a first down, but a good run by McCoy. Sion Harrington made the tackle and brings up short yardage again. It's interesting. Hurry up. Hurry Re up and slow down. Yes. <laughs> Reader, Reader and Utley, the two backups are in there in the offensive line already. McCoy, he's got the first down at the 10. Again, this is going to make it a 15 play drive. Jeff, you saw it. Jeff Munkin with his head, not in his head. Yeah, I, I love this. I love this. Inside, got some backup offensive linemen. Great double team at the point of attack. Herndon, number 60, 77, Utley. Two new, what you might call them backups, but they're all playing. They're all rolling in for that Army offensive line. First and goal at the 10 on a nine-minute drive on the 16th play coming up. You look behind Slumka and Anderson on the Army offense. Slumka into the middle of the pile for about four or close to it. Army has six offensive linemen in the game. They've got an extra tackle in the game. Luke McLeary, number 68, is in the football game. You see Army's red zone offense this year. 40 touchdowns out of the 43 scores. And the way they're driving, I don't think we're going to see a lot of kicking going on. Second down a goal. Michael Roberts in there as a wide receiver to the top of the screen. But it's Slumka to the five. Tyler Pistorio made the tackle. This reminds me a little bit of the drive that Army made against Air Force. Drove all the way down the field, 15-16 play drive, and then did not score. Had one similar like that against Michigan. Threw an interception after driving all the way down the field. Right now that Navy defense says we got to hold for three points at the most. See if they can force this Army team into trying a field goal instead of going for a touchdown. 
Santa McCoy back in the backfield with Anderson. Anderson on a counter, trying to keep it, trying to get to the edge, and he is in. Touchdown, Army. I'll tell you that time, Alex Herndon, number 60, and Noah Utley. Tackle and guard get the key blocks. Watch them pull around, and then it's the counter and the great patience by the quarterback to set up the block, and the block by Herndon is a decleater, the best you can do. Here's the swinging gate as the offensive line moves from the left over to the middle. David Cooper in for the point after. Zach Potter to hold. The kick is good. Ness on a rainy, cloudy, wet day. There's nothing more beautiful to Army football than 18 plays, 78 yards. You want to keep it away from the player of the year and the AAC? Why don't you keep it for 11 minutes and go 78 yards and go up 7-0 late first quarter. Army in front. They used the majority of the quarter to go 78 yards in 18 plays, the longest drive of the year for them, and they lead 7-0. Just was looking back, uh, kind of reviewed that 2017 game when Malcolm Perry was the starting quarterback. He actually carried the ball the first five times in the game, only one to touch it, and he went 9, 6, 7, 5, and 19. They've got to establish Malcolm Perry on the ground. Yeah, he was unbelievable in the snow, 250 yards on the ground a couple of years ago. So only Navy's second possession this quarter. The first one was a three and out. It'll be coming up after this kickoff. Landon Salyers to kick. Garrett Wynn and Chance Warren are back deep. Salyers out of Kingsport, Tennessee. Oops. Now the wind got to us again, so we'll re-tee it. Well, we were talking about two years ago. It was a great scene here, and this was what Malcolm Perry did in front of our CBS crew. 250 yards on 30 carries, including a touchdown. And yet they came up short in that game on a missed field goal on the last play of the yeah. game. Yeah, and then after that, last year he played slot back in this game and only had six rush attempts for 52 yards running the ball. And that one just made the end zone. They let it go, hoping that it would go out of bounds, but it doesn't. Well, they're going to be refreshed over there on the yes. field, I guess. But Malcolm Perry, unbelievable numbers. Three straight years of over 1,000 yards. As we mentioned, the player of the year in the conference. Their only losses were to Memphis and to Notre Dame in mid-November. He thought about a throw. Oh, what a move. He might still throw it. And he's not going to. He's going to actually lose a yard. At Cole Christensen's almost playing a spy. We visited with him yesterday, and he said he's dangerous when he drops back to pass. I'll be looking for him. I won't be able to drop like I usually do. His quote was great about the trophy. The trophy's not leaving here, is what he said about the <laughs> commander chief trophy. Malcolm Perry going to work on a second down and 11 to open the second quarter. And he'll keep it. And Malcolm Perry does what Malcolm Perry does. Run the ball beautifully. When the triple option is working, you don't know where the ball's going. Even from shotgun, these teams now run basically what a lot of teams run. I mean, Oklahoma's running this. The Baltimore Ravens are running a little yeah, bit of this stuff. That's right. <laughs> Lamar Jackson's made that look yes, pretty good, he has. hasn't he? That's the initial first down today for the midshipmen. Well, they haven't had the ball much, but they've got a first down in the first 30 seconds of the second quarter. C.J. Williams in the backfield now with Perry. And again, he finds some room and gets about five yards. So we welcome you back to Philadelphia and into the booth, Brad and Gary. The best way to keep Malcolm Perry in check, don't let him have the football. <laughs> exactly. Christian Anderson has carried the ball 11 times. That's 44 carries at this pace. But you know Malcolm Perry, just too good of a runner. They're not going to shut him down. Just keep him from those big, long right. runs. Navy's probing, and now they've got the wind. 
I wonder if that's going to help him here a little bit because it's significant I think and he's not afraid to throw it over a thousand yards throwing the football this year. Second down and five. And it's Perry behind Carruthers first down side step Out. inside the 40 he might take it Malcolm Perry Navy touchdown. That time they didn't close the escape hatch 55 yards Cole Christensen had a shot but this guy's too quick coach Kenny says no oh, reach out the best runner Navy's ever had he went right through Elijah Riley number 23 he had a shot made them both miss touchdown you just said it a moment ago it's OK if it's three yards six yards but don't let him get a big one he just got a big one Bijan Nichols in for the point after and while Army's touchdown drive was long time sustaining not so much for Navy's on that one and Malcolm Perry total offense the record for a season is his now four plays 75 yards and Malcolm Perry with his 20th touchdown run of the year ties us up in Philadelphia 7-7. My name is Malcolm Perry. The streak ends today. Go Navy, beat on me. Well, the senior out of Clarksville, Tennessee, just lit up the place with a 55 yard touchdown run, and we're tied at seven. Let's take you back to the score. Well, Malcolm did a lot on his own, not, but not everything. First of all, C.J. Williams right here, and then watch the fullback inside, Jamel Carruthers. They both get big blocks on the play, one with the slot, and then one with the fullback Carruthers. And then from there, Perry takes it to the end zone. So a lot on his own, but not everything That's right. on his own. Kind of the way you draw it up, but then some of those athletic moves by number 10 you can't teach. So less than two minutes on the Navy scoring drive almost 11 minutes on Army's opening touchdown drive. Nichols to kick and Brandon Walters and Artis Hobbs back deep on the other end. Fair catch called for at the one yard line so they'll bring it out. For Army at the 25 yard line. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the completely free and always on sports news network. Non stop highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. Don't forget, Gary will be with the HQ gang when we're done here at Army Navy 120. <laughs> Ness, I was watching last year's game, and Jackson Pittman, the nose guard for Navy, stood out, and I was thinking, like, Man, I didn't mention him much at all last year. I hope he's not mad at me. I'm going to give him a few <laughs> shout outs this year because this dude can play. He spent a year at prep school in Rhode Island. He said, I had to figure out what it was all about. I'm kind of a free spirit, and I didn't realize the rigors of being at the Naval Academy. He figured it out, and he's a heck of a football player, and so is Cole Christi uh, Diego Fago, I should say, the middle linebacker yeah, who made the hit. He's back in the football game, Diego Fago. He's got hurt on that quarterback sneak. He's one important football player for them, playing that Mike linebacker spot. He plays to the field. He actually rushes the passers and some nickel set. Very important, important player for the Navy defense. He came in leading the team in tackles with 85. This tackle will be too late to keep Sandy McCoy from picking up a first down. So they move the sticks. Christian Anderson was sensational on the opening drive, including a five yard touchdown out of 48 on the ground. And a first down at the 35, courtesy of Santa McCoy. Michael Roberts and Cam Harris and the wide receivers. Harrison already has a catch today. They're split both ways. On the first down at the 35. Anderson on the keep. Oh, look at that pursuit coming in inside out. 
Paul Carruthers made the stop. You stutter at all. One of the captains, Paul Carruthers, number 51, was named captain for this Navy team. He wasn't even a starter coming into this game. But Coach Niamatololo said, this year I'm naming my captains after winter workouts. I want leaders. And Carruthers is one of the guys he's named. First time in Navy history, four captains for this Navy team. Carruthers, the senior out of Flowery Branch, Georgia. And both his brothers also played at the Naval Academy. Straight up the gut for about four goes Slumka. So what does it take to be a leader of the leaders? And that's what you look at on this Navy team. Carruthers and Higgins, Malcolm Perry, all Marines in the future. And Higgins, the captain of captains, I said that earlier, and you may have wondered what that is. That's voted on by all 33 of the varsity sports at West Point, or rather the Naval Academy, to be a captain. And so he's the captain of captains. Taking it wide this time is Walters. Got about two, that's it. Number 11, Evan Fockman that time, one of the two safeties. Kevin Newberry, the defensive coordinator, watch the safeties in this position, almost in a linebacker position. He says, I'd like to recruit kids at safety that play quarterback. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't recruit me, because I <laughs> couldn't do that right there. Well, we're going to have a punt, even though it's fourth down. They had been successful on fourth down. This one's a little deeper, though. Fourth and three. So Zach Harding, high snap, handles it. Oh, nice into the wind. Kick away, and wow, this is a beauty. And it is going to be downed inside the five-yard line. You can't do it any better than that. Great punt. 10-24 remaining in the first half. The sun is coming out here in Philadelphia. We have a tie game here at the Army Navy game. It's a turkey tradition that's carrying itself into this special Saturday in December. Every year, Roger Staubach invites friends and family to his home outside of Dallas to play a turkey bowl. It's a flag football game. This year was the 40th anniversary of the Staubach yep, turkey bowl. And to make it special, the Heisman winner christened the game balls for this week and he had a couple extra friends there too like Emmett Smith and Mike Singletary well here's what they look like you've got signatures from the Navy Heisman winners Roger Staubach and Joe Bellino we'll talk about him later and that special 120 because of course the 120th edition of this game guys thanks Jamie and the uniforms being worn by the midshipmen today a throwback and a dedication to the Heisman winners Joe Bellino and Roger Staubach in 60 and 63 respectively and they're sweet looking unis and there's the ball yep. Jamie was talking I, about. I, I tried to get Jamie to get one of those footballs for me. I don't think she's going to be able to do it. Well so far she had her hand on. I one. know if she doesn't fumble first and 10. Perry under center from the three yard line. It's Carruthers to try to give him a little more room. We got about two and that is it. Well the change in this Navy offense is because of the way they're running the ball this year compared to a year ago. Last year they were one of the worst seasons in Navy rushing 276 yards a game. In 2017 they set their record but they're going to beat their record this season for the best rushing team under the Niamatolu Lolo era yep, at Navy. Number one coming in Army's number two coming in. <laughs> So we knew we were going to run the ball a little bit today, as is always the case. Second down and seven. Perry will keep it, slips and gets out to the 10, but it's going to bring up third down. So Malcolm Perry already over 80 yards on the ground, including, of course, the 55 yard touchdown. Coach Ken, Niamatololo in his 12th year, 96 wins. They tied for the AAC West title this year. And they've still got a bowl game ahead. They'll be in the Liberty Bowl against Kansas State. But first things first, and that's Army. Third down at three. Perry reverses his field and somehow found enough room, I think, for the first down. He's got it with forward progress. He's way back there around the five right now, but he got it out around the 13. I'll tell you, cornerback. Elijah Riley, number 23, tries to fill the hole, but the block by Ford Higgins, number 72, was just enough to squeeze it out. 
big first down play right there. Probably good enough for points in this situation. If Army gets the ball, they're almost in field goal position from forcing Navy to punt right there. So it's first down for the midshipmen. That's their first third down conversion so far. And the handoffs to Carruthers, Jamel Carruthers. With 825 remaining in the first quarter. Heisman finalists this season in New York. Somebody's going to get crowned there. Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Chase Young, two teams are one team that has two representatives on offense and defense is Ohio State. With that, we test your knowledge with today's AFLAC trivia question. Which Army Navy player has the best Heisman finish since Roger Staubach won it in 1963? Hmm. I think I know that one. I think you I think you do. I know you did that game, so I know yes, you do. I think I do. And whistles and a timeout taken by Navy. Navy takes its first time out of the half. Seven fifty remaining. First half. Army Navy deadlocked at seven. Here's what they're playing for: Commander in Chief's trophy, which Army has right now but they will retain it if they win today if Navy wins by virtue of their victory both over Air Force and Army they would take it back to Annapolis they started that back in 1979 so we're mid second quarter here and there's been one pass thrown in the game might be a time to see another one right here Navy's called a couple but Malcolm Perry has scrambled on both of them Jeff Munkin looking on in his sixth year as a head coach of the Black Knights with Love 40 wins. Both sets of uniforms, as Brad told you, are nice. Those helmets that uh, Navy is sporting today, those are sweet, aren't they? Yeah, they're the throwback to the 60s. And on the other side, for the Black Knights of Army, they honor the first cavalry, the first team. Every year, it's something special between both these teams. Second down at seven. From the 16. Carruthers straight up the middle got across the 20 to the 21. You know we talk about them not throwing but in a way these two offenses at Army and Navy I think the rest of football has moved more towards what they're doing than people would believe. We watch games all the time and we see these zone reads quarterback leads watch Oklahoma play in their playoff game. They'll be running a lot of the stuff that both Army and Navy do. They just do it from the shotgun. Well, we've had 37 total plays. We've had one pass. For that matter, so will Ohio State. Third down and two. This probably won't be a pass either. It'll be a keeper by Perry. Oh boy! It's a stop. He's I short. Think. Yep. Gonna I be fourth and one. I thought it was Patterson, number 55, that was in on the play. Defensive end does not get blocked. Throws it off at the last second. He throws out Kendall Wright's block and makes the stop to force at least the punt formation President Trump taking a lap goes from one side to the other over the course of the game and being short it is a putting situation fourth down coming up Owen White to kick and over and punt and taken at the 42 yard line by Miranda and he got it back near midfield. The ball come out at the end of that. No, nope, I guess it's still in the hands. The 622 remaining in the half in a tie game. And we've had one pass. Here's the other stat of this game. No penalties in the game so far. A little bit of discipline between you these two it. teams, maybe. You got it. Good field position, though, for the Black Knights of yeah. Army. And if they can get that offense working, they could take out almost the rest of this first half. No doubt. Their first one was almost 11 minutes. 622 would be easy. Yeah, Springer off the edge. That's that attacking defense that. Coach K wanted to change a little bit for Navy. Thought they were sitting back a little bit too much. Brian Newberry brought that in. Watch coming off the left side of your screen, number one. Takes it in the backfield. 
They wanted to cause confusion for the offensive line. Straight ahead. A yard here, two yards there. Third down coming up. Sandy McCoy on the carry. Warren made the tackle somewhere on the bottom of that pile. The Navy's defense much improved. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a player, Jackson Pittman. Saw the article on Jackson when they were recruiting him. They gave him his choice. They don't often do that at Navy. You can play offense or defense. And Jackson said, I'd rather play defense. They said, you come here, you can play anywhere you want. <laughs> well, will we see another pass, third and six? Quarterback will go down for a loss. It'll be fourth down and eight. Well, you could see the difference in this Navy defense. They're so much more aggressive. They, in a way, look like the Army defense from a year ago attacking the line of scrimmage. Again, Jacob Springer, number one, from his Raider position, goes inside and gets the sack. We'll talk about Springer. He's springing around that edge. Yes, he is. You know, last year's game, he returned punts for Navy. Yeah. So Army didn't do anything with that possession. Only got two yards out of it. It's fourth down, and they have to punt it back to Navy. Another beautiful punt. Garrett Wynn will have to take the fair catch around the nine-yard line off the Zach Potter punt. Speaking of Heisman, earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was, who had the highest finish since Roger Staubach of these two teams back in 63? Gary? Yeah, you had it. Keen Reynolds, quarterback for Navy. Still upset he didn't get to go to New York for that game, that honor ceremony right there. I don't care if he got three votes as number five. He should have gone. Four guys there tonight in New York, and the prohibitive favorite is Joe Burrow, who we saw so many times this year. From the nine, Navy trying to get something going offensively before halftime. They only got about a yard and a half from Jamel Carruthers as Jeremiah Lowry. Now let's just rem down. remember right here, Navy won the toss deferred. So if they get a driver, they've only had 14 plays in the first half. You know, it's less than a half of what Army has. The president now in the Army section. Got a good seat right there. That's not a bad one. But remember, they get the ball to start the second half. They could flip this very easily with a drive here. Well, they haven't had a good starting position in the last two. They started at the three and then the nine. They've worked it to the 11. Carruthers gets it to the 16 about. And they'll bring up third down. Jamel Carruthers is quite a story. That's for sure. Yep. Started off the season on the JV. And made his first appearance against Tulsa. They saw him on the JV and they were watching him once they brought him in and they GPS him at running about 21 miles an hour. And they said, wait a minute. We got to have a place for this guy somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Third and two. Carruthers, first down. Well, there's no doubt that the fullback position, the B back position for Navy, looks different than it did in the past. They had bulldozers there before, and now they've got speed. They hit it, nice trap block coming across for 40, number 68. Hits it full speed. More speed at that B back fullback position. And Carruthers is considered the lightning of the Thunder and Lightning group. Nelson Smith is the Thunder Man. First down. Just over three to go. Perry wants to throw, will not throw. Goes out of bounds, got what he could. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Get the feeling on those pass plays when he rolls out. Army feels good if he gains less than eight, nine yards on the play. We, yeah. we hold them five. Wow, that's like a stop. <laughs> really? And Malcolm Perry is just passed. Napoleon uh, uh, McCallum. Napoleon played, what, about six years with the Raiders in the NFL? That's pretty good company. Yes. Second down at five. Here's a pitch. And that goes to McKay Cow on the edge. He's going to be short of the first down. You know, we haven't had a pass from Malcolm Perry this year, but at slot back, he threw one last year. He takes the reverse pass on the opening drive, had a chance to hit a big play, did not, but he had the gloves on. Yeah. Remember, he had the gloves. <laughs> He's starting to take it off yes. right there. 
He's got him off today. He's thrown more in last year's game at slot than he has at quarterback <laughs> in this year's game. Speaking of gloves off, the gloves are always off in this game. It's a 60 minute fist fight. Third down and two. Timeout Navy. That's their second. So Malcolm Perry will trot to the sideline to talk to his head coach with 149 remaining in the half. Had a nice run there, but a third down upcoming again for the midshipmen. How fun is that to meet all these guys and talk to all these guys? They're we special. get to do it every year. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's just part of the thousands of kids that go out here, the sons and daughters of all of our, from all over our country. And uh, they're made into men and women here, aren't they? They sure are. Navy with 126 on the ground, 55 of that was Malcolm Perry's touchdown run. Third down and a long two here with Carruthers with him in the Navy backfield. Only one timeout. If Army gets a stop, they should take a timeout. Perry keeps it, got the first down, out to the 39. And the dynamic changes because the special player can change the dynamic. Fake it inside, great mesh, keep it. He was reading all the way to the outside, and bang. <laughs> Cole Christensen says, I thought I had it. Man. I thought man. I had it. <laughs> I think Malcolm Perry will get an opportunity to play NFL football as a slot pack. Just under a minute and a half to go. And now it's Carruthers leveled at the line of scrimmage. Here's a pass upcoming. Perry all day to throw. I forget about it. It's not a pass. It's a run. And he's still running. And Malcolm Perry with a blocker out in front down the sideline. Finally bumped out of bounds. But he's got another big gainer. And there's an opportunity for Navy with 44 seconds to go to cash in before halftime. Injury on the field too for Army. I tell you, I think Army should treat every pass by Navy as a run play because that's where it's most dangerous. Once you get there and you see Fells number 23 gets a good block to the right side of the screen to just free him for those extra yards. But every time he drops back, he creates space. And that's when he's as dangerous as can be. I think it's Joe Stevenson that's down right now for Army. Check on him with 44 seconds remaining in the half. Actually, two Army players down on that last play. Cedric Cunningham starting safeties. You see limping on the sideline. Yeah. And Joe Stevenson is already in the Army injury tent. Yeah, Stevenson's right here. Let's see what happens to him first on the play. Remember, again, it's a pass play. Comes off the edge. Nothing apparent there. Until he turned yeah, right he there. Just, as he kind of just like tweaked it with the block coming up front. And then at the end of the play, we see Cedric Cunningham, number 22, get the hit and almost looks like he's out on his feet right there, doesn't he? That run by Perry, 44 yards. He's got 141 yards on the ground here in the first half, and he has Navy set up at the 17-yard line. Plenty of time left, but only one time out left. Carruthers blasts it inside the 15, and the clock will wind, and Navy will try to umpile guys. Coach Niamatololo saying, let's hurry it up. They do as quickly as possible. A half minute to go. See if Perry just does his thing here. He will try. Good, good call by defense that time. They came with a slot blitz, and they forced Perry inside. Did not let him give him the space on that play. And forces them to take their final timeout. Yes, coming off the edge this time. They just corner the quarterback and give him no wide field to go to. They're playing quarterback the whole way this time. Coming in and then the scrape by Cole Christensen that time from the edge. So only a yard gained on that one and that forced the timeout with 19 seconds remaining. So maybe can't stop it again. You know uh, as you mentioned the fact that he this year he's rushed the ball already for 142 yards in the big rushing game he had two years ago in the first half he had 15 rushes for 146. So he's right on <laughs> he's right on pace. <laughs> exactly. He's just not running in the snow this year. <laughs> No timeouts now. Now the clock is important. Seems like they got to throw the ball here. 
19 seconds. Do you have enough time to run the ball and get your field goal team out there? That's the decision you have to make calling plays right here. They lead the nation in the red zone and scoring. You can see how active Kenny Niamatololo is calling plays. Ivan Jasper is longtime coordinators on the field with him. It's funny for about three weeks in a row we've had the number one red zone offense in the country is either LSU or Georgia. Yes. Now, now here we go. go. It's Navy. Third down. By the way the Army defense is ranked 103rd in red zone defense so not a great matchup. Let's see if they can make it work in their favor. There are two wide receivers out there Chance Warren and Michael Cooper on third throw and five. Throw it. Perry and he's going to try to get to the corner. He did. He got the first down. Out of bounds use six seconds to you get that first play down. the pass play like a run play once he gets the space. He can't be stopped. Nobody on this Army defense is fast enough that he can't get the corner. They actually spot this at the one yard line. I thought he went out around the four, but now he, he swivel hipped it to the one, I guess. Here's the question Can you risk a run here? If you run and don't make it, can you get another playoff? 13 seconds, no timeouts. First and goal. You might. You might. You might not either. Exactly. They started this drive at their own nine yard line. First and goal at the one. And whistle stop play here. Army will take a timeout. Jeff Mocken called the timeout right there. Wanted to see what they came out in, had a look, used one of their timeouts. Let's just think about where Navy is calling plays here as we look one more time on that last run by Malcolm Perry where he gets out gets to the corner and steps out right about the two or three yards. Yeah, it looks well, like they he got a, a, they got a great spot Navy. I did. think so too. I said I thought he went out the four now I say two but yeah, I'd say it's going to be tough to turn, change it though. There's no real angle to change the call. Here's what I would do if I was calling plays. If you throw the ball, you could get three plays and a field goal. There's you only need one second for the last play, as we've seen many times, right, Ness? Right. So I think the first down play I would call is a rollout for Malcolm Perry. Run pass option and tell him if he gets any crowd in his face, throw the ball away. But I'd want him to have the ability to run or throw the ball on first down. Then you get at least two chances for a touchdown here. If you run it, might be your only run you can get. Again, he's going to have Chance Warren and Michael Cooper. You just can't give away the three points. Are his wide receivers, and they're both going to be to the left and the bottom of your screen as you look at it. Actually they're over there on the top from that angle. We do know this about 125 other teams would throw the ball here. <laughs> First and goal. This is Malcolm Perry now an end around to Chance Warren. He'll throw it. And Carruthers got it. Touchdown. We've been waiting for a pass for about an hour. We didn't know it was going to be Chance Warren. Well they schemed it up. It was a rollout but it was a rollout with their receiver and it's in Philadelphia of all exactly, places. Exactly the Philly, Philly special. special. How about that. Nice call by Navy used the clock wisely saved the play and the opportunity for the field goal but they get six and a chance for seven. Bijan Nichols the seventh is good. They started the drive at the nine yard line. They went 91 yards in 12 plays and capped it with this one. Here's Warren. Here's the TD receiver right there. Pitch it out. Sneak the fullback out. Army sees it a little late and it's a perfect throw just over the outstretched arm of Lowry. It looked like a Phil Necro knuckleball but it got to number 34 <laughs> and that's all that matters. They don't throw a lot but that was a pretty throw. That is one happy receiver. Out of Enterprise Alabama surprise surprise Navy scores and they get the football to start the third quarter as well. And there's a there's a happy head coach whoop get back guys and Jeff Munkin is saying are you kidding me. You know you wonder if the timeout call by Munkin allowed Navy to really scheme up the play they wanted. 
you know, they had to hold 30 seconds or whatever the timeout. I wonder if that would have been the call if Army would have just said, all right, let's play football here. We might never know or went, might know when the game's over. Well, they used their only pass of the half very wisely. I'd say. And it wasn't their quarterback. <laughs> no, that's ironic. Through the slot receiver last year, through more passes, Malcolm Perry, than he has this year. <laughs> but but the pass plays called were the keys to the drive. He just ran on them. Ben Fee is going to just dribble one down the middle. It's in and out of the hand. Somebody better cover it. Free ball, but that should end the half as Artis Hobbs got a handle on it. And we are at halftime. Boy, what a way to go the final four and a half minutes, huh? In a tie game, Navy turned it around on a long touchdown drive. And this, again, is how it looked. Perry to Warren. Warren with the lob to the corner, and Carruthers gathers it in. Huge play right at the end of the second quarter. And with that, at halftime, the midshipmen are going to have a touchdown lead of 14-7. to And Jamie on the field with Coach Munkin. You got a particular side you want to stand on? You can stand right there, Coach, as we talk about your defense. You had them contained up until that last drive. What did you learn about the way they're running this offense that you can fix in the second half? They're doing a really good job with the gun stuff. We're, we're giving them too many yards there. And that Perry guy's really good. I mean, he's had two long runs, and we haven't done a good job of, uh, of knocking him down. So give him credit. we got to do a better job of containing that guy and, and not, not giving him big plays. And right there at the end, that was, a, that was a good play. We had a guy to cover him, and we, we, we just didn't do a very good job with it. And how about Christian Anderson in his first start? He's working really hard out there. He's doing a good job for the most part, making decisions. Um, you know, not a bunch of mistakes, but a couple things we can do better. We're going to try to work on those this, at halftime right here. Thank you, Coach. Thanks a lot. So they'll go work on that at halftime and hope to stop Navy when they open the third quarter on offense. Malcolm Perry's been nothing short of sensational in the first half. He's got his team in front 14 to 7. Good first half 14 7. Malcolm Perry's been everything we expected. Hey, well, see, all right, so you grew up playing football. When a guy goes back to pass, what are you supposed to yell? Pass, pass, Don't pass. Don't do that if you're <laughs> Army anymore. It's been off the pass play. That's what I took off the whole first half. When Malcolm Perry, as the coach said, Jeff Munk had said right there, He's pretty good. He's pretty good, yes. and he was sensational I think even on the ground. Roger, the Dodger Starbuck says that's pretty good scrambling that's right there. That's pretty good scrambling. And of course, the touchdown pass wasn't his. It was Chance Warren to Carruthers, and they get the football first to start the third quarter. I think it's imperative for Army to find a way to stop Navy on this opening third quarter drive. Salyers kick, fair catch taken at the 11-yard line by Chance Warren. And we check in with the aforementioned Jamie Erdahl. It's all about the fight to the finish if you are Ken Niamatololo and this Navy team. That was his message in the locker room. Also, keep playing to their identity, which is getting the ball to 10 and 34 over and over again. Don't turn the ball over. And also that Philly special little twist. He's calling it the Navy special now that we're in Philadelphia. All right. Well, that's good enough. It and sure that, worked, that's for sure. And that was the word of the offseason for Navy and all their workouts. The word was everywhere. Finish. And let's see if they can. Almost a jump off and might have been an offside. Let's see. Both teams pointing in opposite ways. Rod Stoddard looked like he fell into the neutral zone. Let's see. I think it's the first penalty of the game. It is. Once Navy points, they're reacting to the encroachment on the Army team. Let's see if it's called that way. Offside. Defense number 55 causing the offensive player to react. Yep. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Well, penalty number one's not the way you want to start the third quarter. Yeah, I think there's movement right there, and that's the reaction. It was actually number 93, um, Rod Stoddard. Yeah, they called 55. It was 93, as we called it. So first and five from the 30. Carruthers got a big opening. Blasts his way for about nine. Jamel Carruthers. David Forney, number 68, coming around the edge. He's the guy that pulls a lot. Watch him come around and get the block. Inside the handoff, and boom, he takes out Christensen. So already, Navy has moved it out to the 39-yard line.
Barry is going to keep it this time. Follows his blockers. Spins his way for about 11. How about that run? And as Jeff Munkin said, it's been the shotgun formation that has given the Army defense the most problems. Now, shotgun run game, again, this is what the Ravens are doing. It's exactly how they've taken on the NFL to win, what is it, 10, 11 straight games, yeah. right? 11 straight games with basically this offense right here when they get in shotgun. You see Malcolm Perry coming right toward the umpire. Our umpire Cam gets it to midfield. And a first down. And he'll keep it again, and he's got the edge. If he gets the corner, he might be gone. Perry, he'll be pushed out of bounds, but not before he's got another big gainer. He could feel Morrison number two coming on the angle, but Perry keeps it. And Malcolm Morrison says, can I find an angle to keep this guy from going all the way? He did, and Perry smartly does not take a hit in that situation. One of the things they've been telling Malcolm Perry all year is, get us those yards, but don't take a lot of hits. Closing in on a 200-yard game. And career rushing yards over 4,000. Now it's Carruthers up the middle before Army lifts him and stops him. Our first half trends. Malcolm Perry, 154 and a touchdown. He's added 32 more already. Christian Anderson led the long scoring drive of almost 11 minutes that he capped with a touchdown. No pass attempts by a quarterback, but Warren did throw on the end around the Navy special, as Jamie said. And that was right at the end of the second quarter. That's where we are right now, 14 to 7. But Navy on the drive on their opening possession of the third quarter. Carruthers, only about a yard that time. Cole Christensen, one of the first guys there. Yeah, he had the first hat slow, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Carruthers kind of ran through it. And then the rest of the pursuit, I think it was Eric Smith, finished off the play. Here we go. Third down situation right here. You know, this Navy offense in the first quarter had four plays for eight yards. In the second quarter, 21 plays <laughs> for 185 yards. They got it going. They sure did. And number 10, as you look behind him, is the guy that gets them going. Third Remember down this and five. Navy defense, 103rd in the country in red zone. They need to stop badly. And they get it. Army gets the stop. It'll be fourth down. That was an interesting call, wasn't it? Almost like a call like they're going to go for it on fourth down. How can you take the ball out of Malcolm Perry's hands right there? A touchdown right there could really put the pressure on this Army offense. They do bring out the field goal unit. Stopped inside Jacob Covington, number 57. B. John Nichols is 9 of 12 on the year. I wonder if that was a read that he didn't keep. You know, he gave it and what he could have kept it. This will be a 29 yard field goal attempt to try to add to the Navy lead. And center judge comes in to stop play. There's a flag down, and now another one. Here's Mike Roach with a the call. There is no foul on the play for a false start. It'll be fourth down. All right, so they pick the flag up. And we'll set it up again from 29 yards out. J.R. Osborne is the holder, number 43, Bijan Nichols, a freshman out of Heath, Texas, to try to add to the Navy lead. As you look from the other line of scrimmage, and now behind the Navy kicker, and it's blocked! Army comes up with a big special teams play. It's Elijah Riley, the defensive captain. What did Army need Five that? Running into the kickers, number 23 touched the ball. The field goal is no good. Time out. We met Elijah Riley yesterday. We looked him right in the face. Can you win this game? Yes, we can. Watch the speed. A four-year starter. Big Michigan game, but piece of the block, and that allowed him to get through it. Look at that coming off the edge. Fourth time he's played in this Army-Navy game. The senior coming around the edge with a huge special teams play. Got it on with his right hand. Just reached out enough. Score remains the same. 14 to 7. Army with the ball and offense when we come back.
Yeah. Switch sides. President has gone over. As is always done at halftime for the president to go from one side to the other. Let's take another look at the block by Eli Riley. And he cuts the corner perfectly that time, stretches out his fart in just the fingers of his right hand. You know, it's amazing that stats he's had three forced fumbles a right. fumble recovery three interceptions hasn't had a block but he picked a nice time to block a kick today again part of that by offense number three it's a five yard penalty first down Part of that Brian Newberry defense is to keep that offensive line guessing. Yep. When we talked to him, he said, you know, one of the things everybody talks about affecting the quarterback, as you look at Brian in the, the press box, and they, you do with coverages, but you also have to affect the offensive line. Do not let them sit there like sitting ducks and know who they're going to block and what angle they're going to take before the snap. A lot of movement and shifting, as you see right there again. Army doesn't like being behind the chains, first and 15. And they're only going to get a couple of it back from Malik Hancock. So the mirror images of the first half for Army. They had that 18 play, 78 yard touchdown drive. After that drive, the rest of the half, Army had 11 plays for 14 yards. They've been bottled up since that one successful drive. Yep. And now they've got second and long. Anderson has thrown one pass, was good for 10 yards. We'll see if they're going to be forced to throw one somewhere here. And remember what he did. He just got six, seven yards so they could get back in phase. Second and 13. Play action. He's going to run it anyway. And he only got about a yard. We might have a holding yeah, we call. Did. Fago came off the edge. The last two plays, Navy shifted what they call a bare front. The inside linebacker shifted out. They squeezed the tackles down over the center and the two guards, giving holding. this Army. Offense number three. Failed to enforce half the distance to the goal. Second down. Giving this Army offense a different look with their front after halftime. So after no penalties, we've had some flag football going on here in the first four minutes of the second half. The Navy defense trying to rile their crowd and they're doing a pretty good job of it. Second and 21, there aren't a lot of plays in the Army playbook for second and 21. And what you don't want is a turnover here. It's quarterback draw all the way. Anderson trying to cut it outside. He's going to be roughed out of bounds after a pickup of about four. And you talk about going back and, and talking to guys that would help you out maybe as Ken Niamato Lolo talked with us about talking with Bill Belichick during the offseason. And he said, talk to Bel Belichick, met with Coach Saban. He said those guys have forgotten more football than I'll ever know and I, that's not giving himself enough credit but the fact is when you've been around that long as a head coach and you go to two guys who have a few more wins than you yes. it's not a bad idea not a bad idea Paul Carruthers moves the quarterback Christensen out of the pocket and then it's cleaned up by Diego for uh, for go number 54 those situations Army really doesn't have the experience at quarterback or the offense to handle third and very long and now unless they get a monster punt from Zach Harding Navy's going to have good field position as he's going to have to punt deep in his own end zone Garrett Wynn stands back around the 50 and he waits on it right there and takes it at the 49 Wynn weaves his way inside the 45 and now you got Navy on a short field and a touchdown lead at the midway point of the third quarter. Navy with a 14 to 7 lead, 846 remaining in the third quarter as we check in with Jamie. This game brings out a lot of special people, but when I found out that there was a dog at the game, I went down to business. I had to find out. It's a presidential pup on site here today. It's Soli, and it's the first time that this lab, this yellow lab, has been to the Army-Navy game. Soli is a 
hospital corpsman second class in the U.S. Navy. Soli was appointed this ranking after serving President George H.W. Bush. He was assigned to President Bush after the passing of former First Lady Barbara Bush. After President Bush passed in November of last year, Soli was assigned to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center at the request of 41. And today he provides support to veterans, but Soli will always be remembered for his love and dedication first to the Bush family. Uh, we salute you, Soli. Malcolm Perry inside the 40. This is the first time Navy has started a drive in Army territory. Remember, they started at the three and the nine yard lines in the first half. And uh, oh, I remember that, that's that. awesome. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> so heartwarming. He lived a great life. Uh, President's that, uh, best friend. Pictured, yes. Pet President's best friend. 32 plays by this Navy offense. 30 of them, either the quarterback or fullback, have been the guy with the ball. This time it's Carruthers. The fullback. And Carruthers breaking tackles down to the 25. It has been quarterback or fullback. Even the pass went to the fullback in this game. One carry by a slot bat. Mikey Cow got one. And there's the key block again. Number 68, Forney, has been a monster pulling and getting those big blocks. But Kay Cow, the slot back, is the only guy that carried it other than what you're talking yep. about. One carry for three yards, otherwise fullback quarterback. Jalen McClinton, who's had a hard time staying healthy, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, is shaken up on the play. Yeah, I've been a story again. all year for this Army defense. The health of their safeties have been in and out the whole season, and let's see what happens here. He had a career high nine tackles in the Army Navy game last year, and that time he missed the tackle, and he's still down. Jayla McClinton heading to the Army tent. Looks like maybe a shoulder or a stinger. Well, we've all seen this all game. This has been the story to me of the game. Drop back for a pass that turns into space for a run. Put this guy in the open field and he hurts you. Drop back for a pass on this one right at the end of the half. And then the trickery is start out as a run, ends up into a pass by the wide receiver for the touchdown. And now Navy on a drive that started on a short field after they forced the punt. Got it with their best starting field position and a first down. They worked it to the 25 of Army. And 203 yards for Malcolm Perry today. Trying to match what he did a couple of years ago when we saw him go for 250. He's got his team in front by a touchdown. Carruthers, nothing there that time. Stoddard was the first guy there along with Adrees Patterson. You gotta slow down the fullback and then deal with the quarterback. And this is what Army did this time. Get inside. Wonderful job that time by Rod Stoddard, number 93. Beat his block, got in the lane, and made the stop. And then a bunch of help. There are a couple of wide receivers out here for Navy. Three of them, in fact. Not second down and nine. Now four. <laughs> that creates space for number 10, though. And he's wrapped up and dropped. Half a yard gain, Jeremiah Lowry and company. It, kinda, it looked like he couldn't get the ball out of the fullback on this play quick enough. Watch it with the mesh right here and see how he gets pulled in that time. Lowry yeah. had him the whole way. Instead of a mesh, that was a net. <laughs> yes, exactly. Get it out of there. So it's third and long. Army's got him where they want him, but <laughs> with number 10, you have to contain him. Third down and nine. You look across the line at Perry. Don't yell pass. And he's not going to. And here goes Malcolm Perry. Not only a first down, but all the way to the six yard line. You ever watch sometimes like Little League where one guy's just better than everybody else? This is what Malcolm Perry is doing. I mean, he's defended. Everyone's covered, got a man on him, just gets rid of that man, and then whoop, makes that last move there's really no defense for this 18 more yards for Perry to the six yard line where it's first and goal 222 yards on 18 carries currently 
from the six for the midshipman. Carruthers got it to about the three before he stood up by Eric Smith and company. Yep, Muckin knowing it's going to be a long ways back if they get two touchdowns behind. It's what he told Jamie at halftime. That guy's pretty good. Yeah. The next snap will come around the five minute mark. Oh, yards. Army nothing in this quarter. And Navy only five yards away from another touchdown. Carruthers straight up the gut. Six more right there for the midshipman. And this was just straight on blocking. No traps, no pulls, just man on man. Fire out, hand the ball to the fullback. Watch, everybody just go straight out. Just get the guy in front of you. Good block that time from the right side. Honaker, number 71, does a great job cutting off his man and allowing Carruthers to get into the end zone. And he gets mobbed by his offensive line in the end zone as Nichols is in for the point after. Extra point up and good with 453 remaining in the third quarter. The Navy quarterback's fun to watch too. Yep. And he's just led his team to a two touchdown lead. Nichols to kick off. All you got is what you got if you're arming. It's not like you're going to start throwing the ball around. And fair catch called for by Brandon Walters, so they'll bring it out. The Army offense to the 25-yard line. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes. Jack Sides from Army and Travis Brannan from Navy. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Army and Navy's general scholarship funds. We congratulate those two young fellas. Now it's time for Army's offense to come up with something. They had the great drive of almost 11 minutes to get their touchdown, and uh, they'd like to get any kind of drive and any kind of points about now. There's the quarterback comparison. It's not like Christian Anderson hasn't played well, but the other guy is pretty special. It'll be Anderson, and he's going to lose a yard. Yeah, he got eaten up from behind that time by a really good football player who is not seen a lot of field because they've been stopping this Army team. Watch the pit. Watch the nose he's tackle got a good right name, here. Doesn't yep. he? In the pit. In the pit. A late shift. Then he defeats the block. Then he defeats the fullback. He, the, the running back. He is the pit man. Yes, he is. Highly recruited player in the Antioch, out of Antioch, Tennessee. Big time recruit. Really wanted him. Pipeline here to Navy, and he has been everything they thought he was going to be. There's same, that same late hometown shift. as Keenan Reynolds. Yes. He was a fun guy to talk to the other day, Jackson. Bad oh, balls out. And swarmed under a loss on the play. Brandon Walters, and he's lucky he didn't lose it completely. Yep. Poor snap, then a late handoff, and they're lucky they still have the ball. You're right. Isaiah Cromarty was right there. And it's lucky that Army still has the football. You get tackled late like that. Watch, ball comes off, drops oh. it, gets it. Has it, and he's very fortunate he didn't cough it up. Nothing there worked for Army. Third and 16. Last time this situation was a sack. Blitz coming. Anderson trying to get to the edge to get a throw off. He does. It's out of bounds on the Navy sideline and a flag down. Did we get a late hit on the quarterback for I, go right I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. I think it was before the throw. Holding offense number five. The penalties declined fourth down. So they did nothing on that drive again. No drive. And a punt coming up. Kel Walker was matched up inside against one of those defensive linemen. There you see him pull him down, first by his jersey and then almost the face mask. Here's the end of the play. That's why I was wondering whether it was rough on the quarterback. Spago took him out of bounds. 
Zach Harding's got to kick it again. Garrett Wins is going to let it roll down inside the 40 somewhere. And the Navy offense back out there with 315 to go in the third. They'll work from the 40 yard line. Army unable to come up with any turnovers today. To just that just going to say that what what could Army do outside of a turnover to slow this thing or tilt this way back in their direction. No first downs in the quarter no yards in the quarter minus actually, yardage actually. actually yes minus six yards is by the army in this quarter midshipman from the 40 straight drop and here he goes to the edge Perry got around one got around the second one but he actually lost a yard so a nice job of stretching it out there and running him out of bounds was Bordeaux. You know, I, I think they wanted to throw a pass because last time in the snow in 2017, when he rushed for 250, he had a big passing day. He was one for two for two yards in that game. <laughs> He's got a long way to go to catch up to the one for two. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> yeah. Right now, he's 0 for 0 throwing the football. But they really haven't had to because of what he can do like this. And there goes Malcolm Perry again. Perry taking would be tacklers with him all the way inside the Army 40. So it was a bit of a sell job to get Malcolm Perry to switch out a slot where he thought he was best. So the year last year when he was playing quarterback, he really wasn't committed. After the Air Force game, they actually moved him out of quarterback out to slot and coach. Kenny Niamatololo said it was the worst mistake he made all year. The last eight games he played slot, and after the Army game, they, he was sold, and he went to the coach and said, I want to play quarterback, and I want to commit to quarterback. He talked with Ivan Jasper, the offensive coordinator, about it in the lobby after the game at the hotel. That's how quickly they made the decision for number 10 to become the guys that has the keys to the ship. This was two years ago as we saw him in the snow be sensational. But guess what? He's almost on that pace right now. He's just seven yards shy of what he did. Don't Only you? It's don't, on a drier field. Don't you get the feeling that Bill Belichick is saying, stop running so much. I want to draft you in the fifth <laughs> or sixth round. Don't you get the feeling that he's going, oh, no. There's what he's done today. 20 for 243. See the next Edelman. This time makes the cut and gets down just outside the 30. And for the first time this year because of the president's declaration you don't have to serve your military commitment anymore if you have an opportunity to play pro football you have to do it eventually. Yep. But guys like him and Cole Christensen at Army and you know a few of the other guys on the team Elijah Riley. Well, They're good enough to get a look, that's for sure. And Alejandro Villanueva, the tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Has another first down run, and now he has topped what he did a couple of years ago as far as rushing yardage. And that might take us to the end of the quarter if they so choose. Because they've got a first down at the Army 26 yard line. Yeah, Villanueva, of course, played for Army, my mistake. Remember, how can you forget a six foot eight wide receiver for Army back in those days? <laughs> well, the fourth quarter, if it belongs to Navy, the streak will be over at three years. Army's hoping they can find a way to do something about it in the final 15 minutes. Third quarter comes to a close. We start the fourth with the Middies with a first down at the Army 26. 
Carruthers going to be swarmed under after about a half yard gain as we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Rillo down on the field. A lot of good football players out here today. Right. So if you take the two units, 22, 22, 44 guys, 43 of them about equal. Pretty good. The one guy. Kind of special. Yeah, I, I, that's been the story of the game, obviously. We opened up the broadcast with the edge goes to the Navy quarterback, and it's materialized that way in this football game. He's got 255 yards rushing right now here in the opening moments of the fourth quarter. Carruthers, woo. Same play. Big hit, and the Army defense is not giving up. Nope. Eric Smith and company put the stop on Carruthers. Inside trap play, and it stopped. Nobody going to slow down in this football game. Uh-uh. Third down and eight. Not exactly any kind of chip shot for Navy's kicker where they are right now. So this next third down and long yardage means a lot. Army needs a negative play here. Get them out of field goal range. Can't allow any points. Do they blitz in this situation? It's a run all the way for Perry. Up and over and inside the 20 to the 19, but short of the first down. It is now decision. Will you go four down territory in this situation? And they're going to bring out the field goal unit. Playing it safe. I remember, Nichols' last one was blocked. And this one's going to be from about 37 yards out. The last one was blocked by Riley. Dijon Nichols from 37. This one's up and just tucked it inside the right upright. I'll tell you, in, in pregame warmups, he was making them from 50 yards easy. He's got a very strong leg. Caps a 40 yard drive and nine plays. Nichols from 37, just keeping it in there. 24 to 7, 80. Just think about the dominance of that Navy defense. Since Brad told you about that 18 play, 78 yard drive, Army has a total 17 plays, eight total yards. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yes. Four three and outs. So those three and outs that they try to get on the Navy defense, they're doing their job today. Brandon Walters, Artis Hobbs back deep. He's on Nichols, a busy kicker today, including that field goal to cap the last drive. This one's returnable from about the 11, Brandon Walters. Walters broke a couple of tackles. Nice return out near the 30 yard line as we check in with Jamie. Brad, it was 50 years ago. Admiral Gary Steele participated in his final march on here at the Army Navy game after playing and starting in the first three in his time at West Point as a tight end. Admiral Gary Steele was the first African American letter winner in football at Army. He broke barriers in his time playing at Army, but he also made memories. He's in attendance today. He told me on his final night playing the Army Navy game, he closed his eyes and stood there and burned the memory into his eyes so when he closes them today he can feel the pads on his shoulders this game is just amazing it is Jamie started to tell us that story this morning and we all got chills yes. here's a handoff Kel Walker and a couple so I've been sitting here trying to think like what can Navy do that better than what they're doing and what can Army do to kind of stop that surge from the Navy defense. I think the only thing they really have is back to the option. Remember early in the game they got a couple option plays. Pitch it a little more. Yeah. Straight ahead again. Whoop, broken tackle though. Got second effort. Not not, not sure they're going to be able to kind of carve out those inside runs against this Navy front. I think they're about 2 yards short once they spot this thing. They're going hurry up here. Sixth offensive lineman in the game. That's one thing they're trying to do. 
Santa McCoy in that four point stance from that fullback spot gets a call. But he only got about a half. Well, he got closer than I thought he did. As a lineman comes in, he's still short. And you almost have to go for it here, do you, don't you? It's a tough spot to do it inside your own 40, but maybe. Oh, yeah, 24 7. You believe in fourth down, you got to go for it. And they will. Fourth and one. A coach that's never been afraid to go on fourth down. And as Gary said, with 11.20 to go, they really don't have a lot of choice. Slumka in there behind Anderson. Anderson will try to do it himself, and he does. Oh, then he pays the price for it. That's just Kevin Brennan again from the secondary. He's hit a lot of people today. <laughs> wow. Well, the Navy safeties have moved up close to the line of scrimmage, and when they hit you, they hit you. So they get the first down at the 43. He keeps it again. Anderson got to the edge, gets out of bounds as he just crossed midfield. So it's been called the get six. How are they doing so far? They got a big lead. Well, they got four three and outs, don't they? That yeah. counts, so they need two more to get to their get six goal, and that's a pretty nice way to do it. Not so much an individual chain. They got a get six change, but yeah. a, a team defense goal to get six. He didn't get a fourth down stop on that last one. That's still on their bucket list. Second down and three from midfield. Anderson. No late pitch here. He's going to be, I think, get the first down. And it's because the tackler's body was underneath him that he spun yeah, I, forward. I think so, too. But that's back-to-back -back first downs. The last first down was the first first down they had since the first quarter. Yeah. And now they team it again. It's the option, the quarterback on the edge that have given them the opportunity. From the 46, drops back, going to throw, got a man wide open off the hands of Artis Hobbs. Well, that would have been on target. Hobbs probably would have had a first down and then some. Yeah, well timed call, just a bad throw. It's not like he's not a lot of practice throwing it today. On the tip drill, somebody on the Army sideline, I think, made the catch, but that's not going to count. There. Yeah, Put it's not going to count. <laughs> so Anderson, one out of three, throwing the football for 10 yards. Quick drop, quick throw. That one is caught. And that's the play they used earlier on second down to shut, uh, set up the third and short, and they come back to it. And they complete it. So both completions to Cam Harrison, the junior out of Allen, Texas, who's their leading receiver coming in. Two catches today for him at 25 on the year. Third and one, two down territory here, and they're going to have to use it now because Cole, uh, excuse me, Diego Fago yeah. just stopped that one cold. And number 99, Pittman again. That penetrate, I'm not missing him this time. The guy will chase me down. <laughs> And a guy that would love to be playing, Kelvin Hopkins, can yes. only look on. More, Injured hamstring and couldn't play today. Or not only it. his experience, but his power running the ball, too. Here's another fourth down. Need to get to the 36-yard line. Chance to get number five in the get six chain right here. And they get it. Guess who? And it's Jackson Pittman. <laughs> Guess who? Give him the chain himself. He almost had it on third down, and he gets it on fourth down. He almost had the handoff. He did. They call him, his teammates call him a road scholar of football intellect. He can read the plays before the snap. I don't know about that, but he sure can defeat the block. Come on. Coach come on. Lolo said, come on, let's get up. And they got up and uh, they made this play. Defeats the blow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's Derek Brown, Quinn and Williams type domination in this football game, and he's done it all game.
Navy with a 24 to 7 lead. I said, give them the chain. <laughs> you know, a lot of teams <laughs> you have go. the glitzy bling bling. I like this. They just go find a chain you can pull a ship with. Let's talk about this call, though. What was Army doing? The quarterback is reading right here on this play, but watch the late shift by Pittman. He's reading. It's a give read, but Pittman beats the play. Late shift beats the block. It was a give read unless they can't block the nose tackle. And that's why it looked such a bad call on the play. It was definitely a read by the quarterback, but he's not reading the nose tackle. He's depending on that block. He's added about 50 pounds around his neck to his 300 pound frame as he gets a breather on the sideline. And back comes the offense. Malcolm Perry for a couple. You know, we always wonder why would they call that play? You know, right up there, nobody can block. Well, the outside defensive end tackle was a give read, and you got to go with your offense. That's all you got. And now Malcolm Perry and the offense can try to bleed clock here as he surpassed what he did two years ago. I might have to change that, you know, 44, 43 and one. How about 42 and two? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, there's another good player. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> 42 and two. That guy's pretty good. He was a pleasure to talk to the other he day. Was. Man. Second down and eight from the 42. Perry waiting for a block, got one. And only got about three or four more yards, but it continues to have the clock move down. And this, under is, what, seven and and a half. this is when you love um, when you're playing with your brothers out there with Army. You look up at the clock and you go, you know, we're probably not going to win this game, but we're going to finish off this game. And when we watch the tape, we're all going to be proud of each other how we finish the football game. Yep. And for Navy, they're just seven minutes away from their seniors who have never beaten Army having the opportunity and they said it means more to them than national championships anything else just got to beat Army and they're seven minutes from doing so third and four Carruthers Whew, man that's what Gary's talking about yep Eric Smith said I'm not done yet that's beautiful that's beautiful I love I love when games are out of reach perhaps and everybody finishes the football game like this fighting inside you could see inside players are just crawling on their hands and knees Jacob Covington is crawling in there trying to make the play and then cleaned up by the linebackers Jamel Carruthers I think is the guy that's down He's the man that had the collision with Eric Smith. I don't blame him for being down for a second. 120th Army Navy game and Navy in command right now. Carruthers came out after being shaken up and then that puts Nelson Smith in and he has played very little today. And now they change up things and they're going to punt the ball here on fourth down. Owen White to kick. Akaya Miranda, the return man, back around the 10 yard line on the other end. Army would love a block punt right here, but let's see if they even have the punt block on. Navy adjusted their protection a little bit with 10 guys up there. And they brought a little heat after him. Fair catch. Taken at the whip, drops. Did he cover it though? Thought he got back on it at the 22 yard line slipped out of his hands. Pretty sure he still got the football. The Navy body language says Army's got it. Yeah. That was the end of the play the fair catch and then kind of sliding in there took his eye off it for a second but he did cover it. So Army if they were ever going to come up with a quick strike of some sort it would be right here. Be there when Ziva returns for the exciting fall finale on NCIS. It's this Thursday at 8, 7 central on CBS starring, of course, Mark Harmon, who we congratulate Mark. Gold medal award, the most prestigious award you can get from the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame, and he got that award He's Tuesday night in New York. Pretty much done it all, hasn't he? Pretty much. Pretty From much. UCLA quarterback, yes. and son of a Heisman Trophy winner to a famous actor and director. Wasn't he the sexiest man alive one year, too? Yeah. Kel Kelvin Hopkins is going to ah, play go. some. Great. He's not 100% by any stretch, but I'm sure he wanted to play, and he's going to come up firing and throws complete. And that draws a response from 
the Army faithful here. Missed three weeks er early in the year, two games in a bye week, trying to get him healthy early in the season. The whole season seemed to change for Army when the loss to Michigan. They thought they had that. They think they should have won it, and the wind sort of came out of their sails and a little bit after that. It was an that. interesting conversation with Jeff Munkin. He felt and believed that, that the Oklahoma loss kind of spurred them on. The Michigan year, loss, right. yes, two years ago with Oklahoma, and then la this year the loss to Michigan kind of took the wind out of their sails. The give inside to Slumka. It's going to be short of the first down. Clock continues to move. I still the five say injuries have a big part of it. When you lose that many quarterbacks, these this offense, as you can see, Navy had the injuries at quarterback a year ago. This time it's Army, just not the same. Third and short, they pick up the first down. Connor Slumka, Navy saying the ball came out at the end. Still unpiling bodies to make sure Navy might have it. They do. Guess. No, it's it's Jerris Warren. I thought it was going to be Pittman. And that's the, the get six accomplished. Three and outs, a fourth down stop, and the last one is. Rip it out of there. The fumble. So Navy takes over with a commanding lead, and. Just under five minutes remaining before the celebration for the Naval Academy can start. There's a get six. They got them all. <laughs> and a happy group on the sideline. Still got the ball in his hand. Meanwhile, they'll use another ball. With a first down for the offense. Perry follows Nelson Smith for another positive gain. I was one of the doubters. I'm wondering whether the move by Navy into this conference, I think that debate's over. I mean, they've joined the conference since 2015. Through those five years, take away last year, four times. Navy has been ranked at one time during the season in the top 25. They've not only gone to the ACC, but they've done very well in the AAC. Perry on the keeper again, positive yardage. Now they were three and ten last year, and only two and six in the conference, and now they're going to be ten and two. The one with the hair and not the hat is Chuck Gladchock, the AD right there in the middle of it. Kenny Niamatololo, the head coach, went to him at the end of last year and said, we need to change a few things, upgrade the facilities, the weight room. We need to work a little bit with a dietitian. All of those things were put into the program, and it looks like it's paying off. They mentioned their loss in the AEC was to Memphis, who won the conference, and the only other loss was Notre Dame. It's funny. Ken was telling us the other day, he said, you know, the last couple years, we beat Notre Dame one year, right. nobody cared. That's right. We beat Virginia in a bowl game, nobody cared. If you don't beat Army, we talked about the turnarounds. And a great turnaround this season to a 10-win year in a couple minutes for the midshipmen of Navy. Perry under center. We'll give it off to Nelson Smith, and he's got the first down. We were asking during the commercial break, what's the record for rushing in this game? Eddie Myers. Eddie, who went on to play for the Falcons in the NFL, 278 in 79. I wonder if Navy is aware he's within, what, four yards? Four or five yards. 27 for 274. Over 10 yards a carry for Malcolm Perry. Didn't mean to rhyme that, it just happened that yep. way. And again, a bowl game still in the future for the midshipmen, a Liberty Bowl against Kansas State. And right now they're just trying to finish off the last 240 here. Perry. Now there he's got the record. And he's carrying tacklers with him down to the 20 yard line. Another 15. Well, it's not about individuals for either one of these two academies, but when you got a good player like this, you might as well call his number. Quarterback lead all the way. 289. 
most by any player in the Army Navy series that's 120 games old and goes back to 1890. What a performance. We've, we've been talking about this for the whole week. You think, he can, you think he can play as well as he did two years ago? We got our answer exactly. today. Exactly. With his speed and elusiveness, somebody going to look at him at the next level, I'll tell you that. Back to Smith, and he goes for five. You know, after the loss to Army last year, Kenny Niamatololo took a hard look. You know, one of the things about his program was he kept his coaching staff a lot of stability, had to make a lot of decisions. Navy about to snap a three year losing streak to Army. And for their seniors, the golden opportunity they were hoping for to finally get a win over the Black Knights before they're done playing football. Second and five at the 15. Malcolm Perry, a little hesitation, then up to the edge, around the corner, into the end zone. Touchdown, Malcolm Perry, 15 yards. And that puts him over 300. Most rushing yards in Navy school history, number two on the list now. Extra point by Nichols is up and good. Well, he's done it all today, and he did it one more time. 15 yards to cap a 47-yard march. 304 rushing yards for the player of the year in the conference and the player of the day in Philadelphia. How about that capper gear? Yeah, that's the guy to pick up right there and we were just wondering, you know, Army took a timeout. I wonder if they hadn't, if Navy was just going to take a <laughs> knee. So they, all right, want to call timeout? We'll call another running play. What a game. Seems like there's always something special in this game. And number 10 has been the specialty today. If you go to a restaurant in Philadelphia, you say, what's the special today? Say, Malcolm Perry. Malcolm Perry for appetizer, main meal, and dessert. <laughs> he was everything, right? Brandon Walters will uh, try to return another one and paid the price again. That's the way the game started. Walter Little same made the guy. same hit, same too. Play. Same guy. Yes. Well, just look and watch and admire number 10's performance today. Now compare the pride and joy of Clarksville, Tennessee, told us the other day, he said, you know what? I come from a town that is mostly Army. His mom and dad, 40 years combined as being in the Army. Army recruited him a little bit late. Air Force wanted him as a quarterback. He wanted to play tailback. He got the keys to the ship this year, and boy, they're sailing. Sure are. So they're going to be 10 and 2. <laughs> there, there you go. Coach Neil Montalolo is going, you know what? I should have never taken the ball out of and, your hands last year. And he said he's year. the best runner he's ever coached. Best runner Navy's ever had. Yeah, he sure looks like it. Final minute. And then the celebration will begin in earnest. And the disappointment on the other side, obviously. Hopkins deep down the middle. It's intercepted. Picked up by Tyler Pistorio. And that'll put the capper on it for the midshipman. And flags fly in as frustrations flare up a little bit. 
So they did one better on their get six. They got another turnover. And Pistorio's an inside linebacker. Red Hopkins eyes all the way, drew him to the throw, and he was able to intercept the throw. Runs underneath the route, watch him just anticipate. Personal foul, intercepting team number 17 for an illegal blindside block. 15 yard penalty, the Navy's football, first down. Tony Brown with the blindside block. Well, it was just too hard to stop a special player today. I know we were talking with John Luce, the defensive coordinator for Army. He says, I've been here 30 years, right. a couple different stints. Right. I've never seen a guy that's scarier with the football than Malcolm Perry. And he said, in this game, it's the highest of highs when you win it, and it's the lowest of lows when you lose it. It's going to be the highest of highs here in a couple of snaps for Navy. The give inside to midfield to Nelson Smith. Well, you don't root for anyone in this game, but for the Navy seniors who've been part of the three losses to get their win and come out of there without having any win against Army, you got to feel good for the Navy seniors. They got it now. The three-game Army winning streak has come to a close. And remember those two old friends I talked about that embraced before the game and put the friendship aside for about three and a half hours. There they are again. So the midshipmen are 10 and 2. Army falls to 5 and 8. And there's the captain of captains in the mix. Out of Norcross, Georgia. And the best running back I ever been around gets a hug from the coach. And the coach is with Jamie. Coach, you told us you needed the toughest team and the closest team this season. Is that what just won you the Commander in Chief Trophy? No doubt. Love these guys. So happy for them. All the hard work. We got great young men. So does Army West Point, but proud of our guys. How did you get here to this moment? Our senior leadership, love these guys. Uh, just great group of young men. I just, I couldn't be more happy for them. Speaking of your seniors, Malcolm Perry set a record in this game, rushing yards. How does that, what does that say about the career he's had here? I'm a bad coach. How did I bench him last year? <laughs> man, I'm a moron, but um, he's such a tremendous young man, great player, and really happy for us. He let us. We'll let you go celebrate. Thank you. I don't think you're such a bad coach. Coach, that's your 97th win in your 12th season at the Naval Academy. But you might never see a guy that's as spectacular in the open field as that guy. Yeah, if he brought that team together. Jeff Munkin right there was just hugging Malcolm Perry. He knew at halftime, I think, when he talked to Jamie that what was about to happen in that game. They had nobody to stop number 10. And again, two guys that worked together as assistants at Hawaii and then at Navy under Paul Johnson. Guys that talk during the offseason, they try not to talk shop. 